um, this recording is going to be one of those examples where I have a quick run through the left hand side of the syllabus. That is because to have a crack at answering this question on the right hand side here, you have to have a fairly good understanding of um, most of these syllabus dash points on the left hand side. So when talking about this idea of sport being a commodity, a commodity is a product you can buy and sell. And in the case of sport, it has become a commodity in today's society. Sport has the potential to generate billions of dollars. And some of the examples of the way that can be achieved is through TV rights. Um, recently, the this year in 2013, the NRL and AFL have so both signed billion dollar TV rights deals. Enormous money can be raised through ticket sales, sponsorship, merchandise, and through player transfer deals. And there could be an opportunity in any exam type question to make a bit of a link to previous uh, syllabus dot point here, the meanings of amateur and professional sport. That is because um, the development of professional sport uh, highlighted here, the meaning of amateur and professional sport, development of professional sport has coincided with sport becoming a commodity. So the first dot point, the development of professional sport, here are some four key points that you probably need to have an understanding of. Um, many people are making the argument that sport now is simply about making money, that the idea of fair play, uh, playing fairly has completely vanished from sport. Um, and the idea of playing sport for fun has also vanished. An example you could use to talk about this is uh, the, all the scandals of drugs and sport that are currently happening. Um, it, the Asada saga that's affecting both AFL and Rugby League in 2013 is testament to um, the degree to which uh, cheating is now starting to occur in professional sport. Um, it's only been fairly recently that sport has become such a big commodity and become full-time professional in Australia. It was as early as the 1980s when AFL and NRL players still had full-time jobs. Now the big turning point in terms of players becoming fully professional was when, when the sporting landscape changed in this country was the TV revenue that uh, came into cricket and Kerry Packer uh, famously revolutionised the game of cricket um, and made it very appealing for TV. This was considered one of the major turning points in this country in sport becoming a commodity. Sport is continuing to grow in this country in terms of uh, being a big business. Uh, cricket Australia is currently now focusing on 2020 cricket. That's because they realise that it, um, it is the the form of the game that is becoming more popular in the media. Um, but this focus on 2020 cricket has had some negatives. Um, there are certain people who, who the, particularly the older generation, who don't find 2020 cricket as um, exciting as test cricket. And the emphasis on 2020 cricket has seen a decline in the, the standard of our test cricket in this country. And you only have to look at some of the results in the latest Ashes series against England, where we're being soundly beaten by England to see that we are not as dominant in cricket as we once were. And there are many people today who are blaming this focus on 2020 cricket in this country as a reason for our decline in test cricket. One of the things that has happened since sport has become so professional is that the standard of sport has improved um, uh, very quickly in, in this country. And this is probably a, re a result of that players now, because they don't have to work, they, can, they are now full-time professional athletes. Their skills, their fitness are improving uh, greatly by being able to train and play full-time. Okay, next dash point, sport is a big business. Um, some points that prove this, as I said uh, earlier, the NRL and AFL have recently both signed billion dollar TV deals. Um, sport is the biggest part of the cable TV company Foxtel's business. It's not the movie channel or the kids channel that dominates Foxtel, it's very much sport. Um, 80,000 seat stadiums with ticket prices at over $200 per seat are regularly sold out in this country. Um, Buddy Franklin, an AFL player for Hawthorne, is being chased by Greater Western Sydney and they're willing to pay over a million dollars a year to Buddy Franklin to play for them. And also sponsorship and endorsement deals. Kia, the motor car company, um, 
um, is charged well over a million dollars every year to be the naming rights sponsor for the Australian Open Tennis Tournament. So there are some examples which just um, pretty conclusively prove that sport is a big business in this country. Uh, the next dash point is sponsorship, advertising and sport. And the key points here is that athletes and sports themselves can earn big money from sponsorship. Uh, Collingwood, the AFL club, has just recently signed a $2 million a year deal with Westpac. Um, one of the problems with sponsorship, though, is that only a select few get the sponsorship. And on a lot of occasion, it's female athletes and sports um, such as netball that suffer. They're not getting the big financial rewards. Um, and if females do get sponsorship, it's generally a result of this term, which I introduced in one of the other recordings called sexploitation, where they are forced to um, uh, uh, take a lot of their clothes off, I guess, um, and do some revealing photo shoots to obtain sports sponsorship. Um, since sponsorship has come into sport, player expectations in terms of behaviour has changed dramatically. There was a famous case in AFL recently where Collingwood were once sponsored by um, the drink driving campaign um, and one of their players was caught drink driving which wasn't a good look for the sponsors. Um, the player was stood down, uh, suspended for a considerable period of time and ultimately the drink driving uh, uh, drink driving company that was sponsoring Collingwood um, stopped sponsoring the team. Now one of the big things in talking about sponsorship and advertising is this idea of ethics and morals. So is it appropriate for sport to use uh, companies that uh, sell alcohol or fast food? And the big one at the moment is sports betting. Is it appropriate to be linked to sport? Um, it's a bit of an ethical and moral dilemma that many sports are wrestling with. And it would certainly be worth, worthwhile you talking about that, or sorry, writing about that if you were given the opportunity. One of the things that's happened since uh, sponsorship uh, uh, company logos appearing all over jerseys is that tr this idea of the traditional uniform has now been lost in sport. At one time, the Australian cricket team only played in all whites. There was no logos whatsoever on, on the shirt, but now there are a number of logos on the Australian uh, cricket team's uh, uniform. Um, companies such as VB, for example, have got their name plastered all over the Australian cricket shirt. But, 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 uh, the last, last dash point here is the economics of hosting major sporting events. Now, when we're talking about major sporting events, the two big uh, sporting events that occur every four years in the world are the World Cup soccer or football, depending on what you like to call it, and the Olympics. Um, other events that are also popular for countries to host, but certainly not as popular as uh, the World Cup soccer and the Olympics are the Commonwealth Games, Formula One racing, and the World Cup in both cricket and rugby. Now there's considered to be a lot of positives in hosting uh, events such as the Olympics when Sydney did in the year 2000. Some of those positives um, could be that it's a great opportunity to showcase the nation. And a dot point that comes up later on in this syllabus is this whole idea of, uh, the, of, of a sport in Australia is closely linked to Australia's um, identity. And the Olympics was a good way of promoting Australia's sporting identity. And also tourism gets a big boost when you host such a big sporting event. There's a feel good factor that happens in the country for those two weeks or three weeks that the event is running for. Um, and there's also, this is probably the biggest one. It's the legacy of the infrastructure that is left. When the Olympics was built, um, in, sorry, when the Olympics was staged in Sydney, we've now got all those great sporting event uh, facilities out at Homebush, whether it's the swimming complex or the, the actual stadium itself. But even all the, the minor type sports have now got great facilities out there, such as archery and hockey. With those positives, though, come a range of negatives. And many people would argue pretty strongly that the negatives outweigh the positives in terms of hosting major sporting events. There is a huge financial cost for a country in hosting an event such as the Olympics. There's a lot of stadiums and facilities to be built. You've got the athletes village and all the actual infrastructure. So the roads, etc., that have to be built to get the um, spectators to and from the event. Unfortunately, something that's happened in the last few years has been that the high terrorist risk that's associated with many and our leading sporting events. And some countries now have to spend a lot of money on security to help keep athletes and spectators safe. 
Now, the main argument people make is that instead of, instead of spending a large amount of money on sport, it would certainly, a country would be better off spending that money on health and education. Um, as a result of hosting an event such as the Olympics, a nation can end up being in debt for many decades. Okay, 10 minutes into this recording, it's a long one, we're almost there. The last dash point, uh, consequences for spectators and participants. First of all, we're going to have a look at, uh, since sport has become a commodity, since it's become a big business, what have been the positives and the negatives for the athletes? And we'll quickly run through these. The positives for the athletes is that they now have the potential to earn, to earn high levels of income. They can travel the world, um, they can now train full time, and then there's great opportunities after they retire by getting into the media. Now, there's also a range of negatives for sport, although some people would think not. Um, their private lives are now under greater scrutiny. It's hard for them to go out without being harassed by um, members of the public. Um, they're forced to spend a large time away from their families in traveling. Um, they're playing more games. Uh, this higher standard of games has led to greater risk of injury. And it's now difficult for players to stay loyal to a club because another club offers them a higher contract. And a lot of players like to be loyal to the, to the club that they started off playing with, but the lure of the dollar often wins over loyalty. Since sports has become a big business, there's also been some positives and negatives for the spectator. Uh, there is no doubt that professional, professionalism has led to a higher standard of play, and that, that just makes sport more exciting to watch. Um, also, some sports have been changed to make them more exciting. Uh, cricket's the easiest example to talk about there. So uh, the change from test cricket to 2020 cricket. Um, more sports are now available to watch on uh, Foxtel. Um, you can watch pretty much any type of sport you want if you are lucky enough to have Foxtel. Technology has also improved on TV, which just has made sport more exciting as well. Some spectators argue that since sport has become so professional, there's been some negatives. Um, previously, I talked about for the athletes, there's now a lack of loyalty in sport. Players just switch from club to club to get uh, whoever is going to pay them the most money. Um, some people don't like the fact that the rules of some games have been changed to make them more, to make them more uh, exciting and appealing. Uh, traditional uniforms have been changed to accommodate sponsors. So for example, uh, Supporters of the St George Dragons just once liked having that white jumper with the red V, but now there are a number of sporting lo uh, sponsors' logos on the jersey. And ticket prices have increased dramatically. Um, there's a bit of a media story this year in the Rugby League in 2013 that the most basic ticket to watch the Rugby League this year is going to be over $200 at the grand final. Some people think that is alienating uh, the working class fans. And also the cost of TV to watch your favourite sports. Um, a lot of sport today is now on Foxtel, cable TV, and the monthly subscription of uh, close to $100 a month makes sport simply too expensive for some people to watch. I apologise about that. That's 13 minutes of your life you're not going to get back, but I hope you have found that helpful um, in terms of looking at the dot points sport as a commodity.